Um, hi everyone. So in this video, I will talk about a problem on convolutions. So we have two functions like x of t is equal to u of t and h of t is equal to 3 u of t minus 1 minus 3 u of t minus 3. So what we have been asked in this question to do is to find y of t, which is the convolution of x of t and h of t. So normally we have um, um, the graphical representation of the function and then we can mirror one of the functions and shift it and then do the convolution and sometimes we have it like this so we have the function itself and then we have to represent it like graphically and then find the convolution of these two um, signals so it really depends on how the problem asks you sometimes they ask you to only find the convolution using the convolution integral without showing it graphically but here we want to show it graphically so what we have to do let first um, let's draw the functions the original function so x of t and h of t so x of t is u of t so we know that u of t will be 0 until t equal to 0 and then it goes to 1 and stay 1 until t goes to infinity so this will be my x of t and then h of t we have 3 u of t minus 1 minus 3 u of t minus 3 so i know that my function will be like this so u of t minus 1 and u of t minus 3 and the height is because of these threes that we have over here so now i have both signals and i know that the convolution um, integral is x of t minus lambda h of lambda d lambda so what i have to do is i have to swap one of the functions and then um, shift it by t to make this x of t minus lambda so what i will do is that first let's find um, x of negative lambda so the lambda that i'm using is just a dummy variable so x of negative lambda because then at the end i want to use it in the um integral with respect to t so we have x of negative lambda so the only thing that i did is to swap it and mirror it with respect to the y-axis and then what I have to do I have to shift it by t so when I shift this function by t my function is gonna start let me draw it with another color it will be like this so I'm shifting my function by t so this is going to be x of actually t minus lambda. So the previous one, the red one, was x of negative lambda. And then I shifted by t, so it became x of t minus lambda. Now what I have to do, I have to move my x of t minus lambda through h of t and then find the overlaps and then um, calculate the convolution integral. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw these two functions together in the same graph so what I have here is x of t minus lambda which is t over here and then the other one was 1 2 3 so the other one is h of t that was over here so this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so when t is between 0 and 1 my functions x of t minus lambda and h of t or h of lambda they do not have any overlap so when they do not have any overlap i can say that their convolution integral is equal to if i call this y of t is equal to 0 
Now, let's see if I move t between 1 and 2. Let's see what will happen then. So then, we are going to have, again, so all the time my h of t will be at the same spot because h of t is not changing, it's not moving. 1, 3, and then 2. And now my x of t minus lambda is moving so that we can have t in between 1 and 2. Right? So this is my t. Now I have to look and see what is the interval that these two functions have overlap in and then find the convolution integral or calculate the convolution integral with respect to that. So clearly from 1 to t is the interval that these two functions overlap, right? So before t equal to 1, we only have that red function, which is my x of t minus lambda. And after t, you can see that my red function, the x of t minus lambda, is equal to 0. So the only interval that I have um, overlap is between 1 and t. So when t is between 1 and 2, y of t is going to be equal to integral from 1 to t. Now, x of t minus lambda, h of lambda. What is x of t minus lambda? We see that the value of this red function here is equal to 1. And what is the value of the green function or h of t? It's equal to 3, d lambda. So here we have 3 lambda from 1 to t. And then we're going to have 3 t minus 3. So this will be my convolution when t is between 1 and 2. Now I have to move forward. I have to move my t between 2 and 3. So when I have t between 2 and 3, let's see what would be the convolution of these two functions. So h of t, again, it's going to be on the same spot as it was from 1 to 3 with the height of 3. And then x of t minus lambda will go, and then here is my 2. So t should be between 2 and 3. So this will be my x of t minus lambda. Right? So t is between 2 and 3. So again, t is between 2 and 3. So when t is between 2 and 3, you still can see that the overlap of our functions are again between 1 and t, right? Why is this like this? Because x of t minus lambda is going to be equal to 1 all the time before time t, right? So here we again have y of t equal the integral from 1 to t of 1 is my red function, the value, and then um, 3 is going to be my green function, d lambda. So again, we're going to have 3t minus 3, the same as the previous one. Then I have to move t um, between 3 and 4. So let's do that. So we have t between 3 and 4. Um, let me make this a little bigger. So if this is 4. 3, 2, 1. Then we have my red function, that t should be between 3 and 4. So now here, the overlap is all this function, uh, the green function, right? So I can say that when t is between the 3 and 4, y of t is going to be between 1 to 3, the red function, the green function, d lambda, and then we're going to have 
3 lambda from 1 to 3, which will be 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. Now, we can see that from now on to whatever t, I mean, t goes to infinity all the way. If I move t to infinity, the left part of my red function will have the value of t equal to 1, uh, I mean, the value of 1, right? So all the time, we're going to have the same overlap from t greater than 3. So I can just delete this and say that this is true for t greater than 3. Now, if I want to write my function y of t, which is the convolution of those two functions, I had t between 0 and 1, t between 1 and 2, t between um, 2 and 3, and t greater than 3. Right? Now, if I go back here, we have 0 for the first one. We have 3, t minus 3. So basically, for these two, fun these two intervals, we have the same y of t. So I can just delete one of them. And right here, 3 instead of 2. And then for every all t, each t greater than or equal to 3, we're going to have 6 as my convolution interval. All right? Okay, so this was the question that we had here, and we had to show graphically how the convolution between these two signals look like. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below. And thank you for watching.